32-year-old Sarah Stewart and 48-year-old Christopher Stewart are behind bars after their six-year-old son Aidan Stewart died from a Benadryl overdose. On the 30th of October 2022, authorities responded to a home at 223 Lamplighter Drive in Greer, South Carolina after receiving a call for assistance regarding an unresponsive boy. The parents of the child told first responders that Aidan fell out of a recliner, hit his head on a hard floor and suffered a seizure. Medics transported the child to a local hospital and the staff informed deputies before they left that the victim's prognosis was grim. Later that day, the boy succumbed to his injuries and an extensive investigation began. A search of the home revealed Aidan was living in filthy conditions and there were past child abuse allegations within the family. An autopsy revealed Aidan suffered bruising in various stages of healing and he died from a Benadryl overdose. He weighed 45 pounds and reportedly had enough Benadryl in his system to kill an adult male. The boy's parents allegedly admitted to authorities that Sarah gave the child Benadryl because he was hyperactive. Authorities said that the child's biological mother signed guardianship of the child over to Christopher while she was serving federal prison time in West Virginia. On the afternoon of Thursday the 30th of March, Aidan's parents were arrested. Sarah was charged with homicide by child abuse and unlawful neglect of a child, while Christopher was charged with unlawful neglect of a child. Sarah remains in the Spartanburg County Jail without bond, while Christopher remains in custody on a $10,000 bond. The investigation into the matter continues. A 28-year-old teacher's assistant faces charges for allegedly sexually abusing a 9-year-old female student using a stethoscope. On the 28th of March 2023, authorities responded to Lehigh Elementary School, located along North Stapley Drive in Mesa, Arizona, on reports of abuse. The girl told staff that the teacher's aide, Antonia Jordan, had touched her inappropriately the day before and may have recorded it on his cell phone. The victim detailed that when the class ended, Antonio told her to stay behind and pulled up her shirt. He put his hands under her shirt and touched her chest. Police questioned Antonio the next day when he told investigators that he had a stethoscope fetish and targeted the girl because of the interest in the stethoscope he brought to class. Antonio allowed officers to access his cell phone where they located three videos of him abusing the victim on three different occasions. The videos are all similar and showed Antonio in the classroom alone with the victim. He can be seen using the stethoscope on the victim's body and putting his hand under her shirt, touching her all over her chest. Antonio allegedly told police he knew his actions were wrong, but he got caught up in the moment. Antonio was booked into jail for three counts of sexual abuse and has since been terminated from school. The investigation into the matter continues. Two men and a woman are behind bars after allegedly torturing a man for hours before he managed to escape to contact authorities. The incident occurred on the 22nd of March, when the victim told police that one of the suspects invited him to a home in the 1200 block of Wilbur Street in South Bend, Indiana for food and heroin. The victim, who's not been identified, said he was called into the kitchen where four people ambushed him, two were armed with guns. Authorities said that one pointed a gun at him, threatened to shoot him, then fired it over his head. They took his phone and forced him into the basement, where he was bound with ropes, chains and cords, and beaten with pieces of wood and an electrical cord, burnt with a cigar and water boarded. One of the assailants wrapped a cord around his neck and strangled him. The victim said he was tortured for five hours until he escaped the bindings and ran to a nearby home and called police. Responding officers found him with an electrical cord still wrapped around his neck, and he had a shirt that the suspects had used to gag him. He was hospitalized for multiple injuries, however authorities have not provided an update on his condition. Following an execution of a search warrant on the 28th of March, authorities arrested three suspects who said they were familiar to the victim. 35-year-old Robert Hollins IV, 24-year-old Eddie Guyton, and 26-year-old Alexis Guerrero faced gun and robbery-related charges and criminal confinement, intimidation and battery. Robert also faces a charge of unlawful carrying of a handgun, prior felony conviction within the last 15 years. Alexis faces an additional charge of strangulation, a trio held at the St. Joseph County Jail. Details about the fourth suspect is unclear, but authorities said the investigation is ongoing. <laughs>